My name is Janice Hall, and I will be playing Greta in the Quotidian Theatre Company's production of James Joyce's The Dead, which will be produced in November and December. And today, I have the privilege of interviewing Miss Marnie Nixon, who was one of the cast members of the production uh, that was on Broadway and produced in the year 2000 um, at, at the Belasco Theater, right? Belasco Theater, yes. And before that, it was... Playwrights Horizons. That was the original. Right. Original. Okay. Uh, before we be begin talking about the piece, I'd like to give you a little bit of background about myself, and uh, Marnie will do the same. I have spent most of my performing life as an opera singer, and I've been uh, privileged to perform at many major opera houses around the world. I lived in Germany for a very long time and came back to New York about five years ago. And since then, I've been pursuing cabaret, theater, and film, as well as opera. Um, I made my New York off-Broadway debut this past spring in a play called My Occasion of Sin. And I am really thrilled to be a part of Quotidian Theater's production of The Dead. I'm also thrilled to be back in the D.C. area because I grew up in Silver Springs as a child. And I also performed uh, multiple times at the Kennedy Center with the Washington National Opera and also at Wolf Trap. So uh, now you know something about me, and I'm betting that some of you already know something about this lady, and probably what you know is that she was the singing voice for some very famous stars in several uh, legendary Hollywood musicals, and uh, I'll, let you, I'll let her tell you more about that. So right now, it is my pleasure to introduce Miss Marnie Nixon. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let's see. I uh, was a violinist at a very early age. Started studying when I was four years old. My whole family played instruments. We had a little family orchestra. We were very musically oriented, the whole family. Uh, this was in California. My folks had come from Wisconsin and um, I was born in California, and my two older sisters were born in Wisconsin. So we were really, we had these very strong, I would say, Middle Western ethics. My mother was German, very, very strong and very uh, disciplined. My father was Scottish. He was also disciplined, but he had a sense of humor, which was nice. <laughs> and, um, and then I uh, began singing, and by the time I got to be Oh, 12 and 13, uh, I realized that I wanted to be a singer rather than a violinist, and I was a part, a member of the uh, Roger Wagner Chorale, which became the Los Angeles Master Chorale in Los Angeles in those days. And then I became soloist with them. Uh, we had to be very musically astute and had to read everything right off the bat and sing in many languages. And then I just did everything that was available to me, the, uh, chamber music and operas and, uh, and movie things. And then the dubbing started. They needed somebody to dub somebody's voice. And I kept saying, I can do it. I was always saying yes. And, and uh, uh, so uh, I began to make some money that way. And then gradually one thing led to another. And then I met my husband. Uh, my first husband was Ernest, Ernest Gold, it was an Academy Award winner and Stanley Kramer movies he did. and uh, So we were a musical team for a long time and it was wonderful and at that point a lot of composers had come to Hollywood like Stravinsky and Schoenberg. Uh, the Monday Evening Concerts was a, an organization that did a lot of concerts of contemporary composers' works and I began singing everything I could, and because I could read everything, I was really, I could learn things quickly, and it, it was very valuable. I had a very flexible voice. And gradually, I uh, then was doing the dubbing for some of these films that came along. Some of the big ones, the first big one was uh, The King and I for Deborah Carr. And then I did uh, West Side Story for Natalie Wood, 
and then I did um, Audrey Hepburn in My Fair Lady after that and they became you know big blockbuster pieces and it became uh, nationally known more than than all the concerts which I was doing by now with the New York Philharmonic and things but it's in a very esoteric world the cla the classical world and so I became more known more and more as as this uh, girl from Hollywood who did dubbing and yet I was always appearing in plays anything that I could do um, to uh, to do dramatic things and uh, just straight dra drama and TV and I did Sound of Music. I was uh, uh, Sister Sophia. Uh, if you didn't blink, you saw me in that movie. <laughs> <laughs> and um, then I just gradually developed my craft and, and began doing concerts all over within in Europe and uh, and traveling as any concert singer does, and, um, and then you came to New York and started doing Broadway. And then yes, then I came to New York and started doing uh, Broadway shows and uh, off Broadway shows, and that's I guess when James Joyce's The Dead I guess that uh, brings us came to the along. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you come to be involved in this production of The Dead? Well, um, you know, I've forgotten whether I had to audition or whether they just called me at that point. I think I probably had to audition. I've really forgotten. <laughs> and uh, it was a very unique production because they wanted it to be very realistic. They wanted, uh, I had to play older than I was at that moment which is always fine <laughs> and uh, it was based on the the, the rendition of, of the, the story by James Joyce so it, it was uh, you almost had the feeling that, that it was like you were basing it on a true story <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and yeah I'm sorry to interrupt the, um, you played the role of Aunt Kate yes you want to say that right and um, when when you became involved with the production, was it was it a finished product already? Had they written all the music? Had they put it all together, or were there re revisions and? Well, that's an interesting. It's an interesting question. No, actually, it was in the process of being written the music as we were going along, and um, so we didn't we didn't know the music ahead of time, but they they wrote it according to our. Uh, you know, talent and to base it on our particular voices. Oh, I didn't know and that. And it was nice. it was uh, really nice that way. Um, but they wanted it to sound like old time Irish folk songs that would have been sung in the parlors of what's in Ireland in 1905, I guess it is, and. So it has that flavor of the fact that you think you're listening to actual folk songs of that era. Mm -hmm. And it, it was wonderful because it was a party, in, in the setting it was a party that, that these sisters had, the Morgan sisters had, every year around Christmas. So they were always used to getting together and having a wonderful meal and sharing their lives together. And it is really almost like nothing really major happens during it. There's no major events, except it's all the inner events that are going on with the people and their reactions and the subtle things that are then going on, which is the the uh, Ju Julia is go is has been diagnosed as very ill, and she's mm -hmm. she's your sister. Dying. This, she's my story. sister, and so she's dying. So there's a special kind of pathos when everybody comes together. They don't mention that at all, but it's you can you can tell it's that way. We gather around her, and we have these wonderful times of reminiscence, and then there's a little kicker at the end where the the. 
Gabriel, that, who is uh, Christopher Walken's part, is reveals a little secret about his uh, marriage to uh, to Greta, and uh, Greta actually has revealed something that she hasn't ever told before, and it's kind of a very very bittersweet remembrance about a romantic involvement that she had. And it kind of, you, you cut, the way it's staged and the way it's presented is you kind of get this general era, uh, aura of this era of, of how you express things in those times. But the, the gentleness of these spirits and the warmth. Uh, like, a, like a memory. Like, like a, memory, a memory, yes. It's a little bit, uh, yeah, in a passe kind of feeling mm -hmm. except that you feel the warmth immediately it's a wonderful family actually i first heard about the piece from marnie um i she has a poster in her apartment of the from the show so that's the first and i also she uh, wrote a few years after she was in the production she wrote her autobiography and so i had read about it in there so i was that was the only acquaintance I had with the piece before I was asked to be a part of it. And uh, I was living in Germany at the time of the production here in New York, so unfortunately I didn't get to see that. But I have since seen the archival DVD that they have at Lincoln Center, so I, I'm familiar with what the production was like. And uh, we're going to talk, uh, I think, more about the actual production and Marnie's experiences with it in our next segment, so I hope you will stay tuned. Mm -hmm. 